So, um, Alan, it's great to be here on Moon and Back. You know, I've been working for a long time of getting to the moon and someday maybe even coming back from the moon. That would be great too. But my name is Bob Richards. Uh, wear a number of hats uh, and uh, perhaps, uh, well, most, most recently as the co-founder and CEO of Moon Express, a uh, company not only vying for the Google and Rex Prize, but really trying to create a private sector um, permanent uh, transportation system between the Earth and the Moon and other destinations. Uh, but historically, um, I've been a space cadet since I can remember. I'm an orphan of Apollo. Uh, I've been uh, involved in a number of uh, institutional type startups as well as some entrepreneurial type startups. I'm a co-founder of the International Space University, uh, which was founded way back in the day in the 80s that I co-founded with uh, Peter Diamandis of XPRIZE fame and Todd Hawley. Um, wonderful person we worked with for many years who passed away too soon as, as a memorial just right by us as a matter of fact for Todd that was uh, put up by the ISU students of uh, 2009. And uh, uh, it was uh, Peter and I had met first in our founding of Students for the Exploration and Development of Space even earlier in the 80s where as students we had stood up a student organization that was to take back the space age, you know, do something about getting the vision. We'd grown up so motivated by the Apollo achievements, thinking that this was going to be our obvious destiny. And of course, when we got to college and university, it wasn't obvious at all that there was going to be any opportunity for us. So creating the Students for the Exploration and Development of Space, SEDS, and then that transition to the creation of a foundation called Space Generation. Um, and Space Generation is a phrase we coined to really create a market of the entire global you know, institution of youth Right, all those born since the beginning of the space age, when the first instrument of humanity left uh, the atmosphere. I call it Sputnik because that makes me, allows me to be included in the space generation. Some people say it's Gregarin's first flight in 1961 as the first human, but however you define it, it's this notion that all of us are born as part of a spacefaring species. And all the kids born today are members of a generation that is forever severed from the generations that came before us. Um, you know, maybe the most important epoch of humanity that took place before the space generation was when the amphibians crawled from the oceans to the land. You know, it's that transition of humanity from one phase to another. And as we transition from the oceans to land, so we are transitioning back to another ocean, but this time it's the ocean of space. And then it was uh, in the late 80s that we founded together the International Space University, which now is 24 years young. Um, generating thousands of space mafia who are now taking up positions of leadership in, in space industry, government, academia, and really are the, the thought leaders in the world today. And we have this amazing network of individuals out there who went through this common experience of the International Space University. Uh, throughout the 90s, so started many uh, commercial space companies. Um, and space is hard. You know, commercial space is even harder. So it's the startups that uh, didn't continue that are as important as those that are so promising today. And I have a number of those to my favor. <laughs> and so does Peter, and so do a lot of other people. But most recently, a um, co-founder involved with uh, Peter Diamandis, Ray Kurzweil, and others in the creation of a new institution called the Singularity University, which is located here at the NASA Research Park, uh, proximity to NASA Ames, um, where in the future Starfleet Academy will be located. And the Singularity University is a, is a similar mission to the International Space University, um, but with a broader focus, where space is one, one track within a much larger matrix of uh, what we need to do and learn about to be human beings in a multi-planet species. So that's been my path uh, most, uh, most recently, um, having found, discovered my tribe here in Silicon Valley, uh, those people that are young enough to carry backpacks and have enough wealth and resources to actually help us get off the planet. Um, it's Silicon Valley's love of commercial space that has attracted me here. And uh, through um, International Space University, through Singular University, and through connections I've made through the networks, um, I discovered uh, a number of people who agreed with me that commercial space is important. And with them, most notably Barney Pell and Naveen Jain, uh, we co-founded a company called Moon Express, and we're going to the moon. And we're going to utilize the moon as a stepping stone for other missions, but most importantly, we're going to explore the moon for benefits that we can bring back to humanity and Earth. So Moon Express um, is one of the most exciting things I've been doing lately. 
Uh, it's exciting because not only does it have the vision of what the moon is and can be to humanity, the vision being not only is it an inspiration for humanity, um, you know, it, it's part of every culture throughout history. It's influenced us in an evolutionary sense. And it's a beacon hanging in the sky that everybody can look at. It doesn't matter if you're born in poverty, if you're born in wealth, what country you're born in, you can all see the moon. And uh, the moon represents this icon for us. So Moon Express is about creating an economic dipole between the Earth and the moon. First things first. First we have to get there. And we have to get there in a way that's not just a stunt. You know, uh, Moon Express and the others working on creating a private commercial enterprise to reach the moon. We're not interested in the private sector equivalent of Apollo, which created amazing things for humanity, but was also a dead end, you know, as this false dawn. We want, we want the new age of commercial space to embrace the moon as a creative resource for humanity, for not just what we need to operate in space as a multi-planet species, but benefits to bring back to Earth. And it really is these early economic ties that have been so elusive to all of us that we're really trying to define. In Moon Express, we have some incredible people working with us. Uh, we also have the advantage that, you know, in the last couple of years, uh, mostly through the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, we have broadband information coming back about the Moon, discoveries that we never knew, you know. We thought, you know, when we left the Moon in the 1970s, it was a dry, dead rock, been there, done that. Obama said that. That was a mistake. It's not been there, done that. We are more, it's like, we've, it's like you land in the Sahara Desert, aliens, and you look around and you say, been there, done that to Earth. Well, no, we've only scratched the surface. We've barely begun to explore a fraction of a percent of an entire world. And even from orbit, we're discovering new things. When we get down to the surface, when we actually start to explore from an entrepreneurial perspective, and nobody's looked at the moon and executed a mission from an entrepreneurial perspective yet. And that's what Moon Express is trying to do.